Paul from High Tech Legion, and we'll be taking a look at the EVGA UEFI BIOS for the X99 FTW, that is right, for the Win Edition motherboard. So let's start out from the center. As you can see, the multiplier is set to 30. Everything right now is on default settings. So this is the new Haswell E processor, which is a, has a multiplier of 30 and a base clock of 100. So it is 3 gigahertz. There are eight cores and it is hyper threaded. So it's going to give you a total of 16 cores virtually. On the left hand side, you'll see your memory. Of course, it'll tell you what type of memory. This is DDR4 memory, and it shows you what slots your memory is in. So I have it in 2, 4, 6, and 8. 16 gigabytes. This is my megahertz. This is my CPU voltage down below, and of course, my memory voltage. If we come over to the right, we see our PCI Express lanes. And right now I only have a single card in there, which is a 780Ti, and it is running at PCIe 3.0 at 16x. Below that we do have our temperature for our VRM, and then to the right of that is our temperature for our CPU. Right now we are in our overclocking tab. The overclocking tab gives you the essentials of what you're going to need in order to set manual timings for overclock or just to change from default timings in the BIOS. So of course right now we have our CPU frequency at 3000, our ring frequency is set to 3000, CPU die temperature is 30, 31, 32 degrees, and then we go to the CPU overclocking where we see the CPU multiplier control. Right now is set to auto by clicking the down button, we can change that to manual, and now it brings up our manual settings for our actual turbo turbo uh, ratio. So of course the turbo on this is up to 3.5 and that's where you will see the 35 and then of course the sub subsequent cores are set to 33. This is default. We'll go ahead and set that back to auto. Of course we have a non-turbo override which is set to 30 and of course that is the base clock. Your base clock overclocking frequency settings, of course you could change that by simply inputting it with your keyboard, or you could actually go up or down with these buttons. So we'll go ahead back and set that to 100. And then behind, below that we have our peg DMI ratio, and that will give you your divider on your peg and DMI. Going down to the voltage control, we can see our C CPU voltage mode, ring voltage mode, VSA offset, CPU VIN, the, the VDROOP, your PCH, I call it fiber, your fiber faults, and your fiber efficiency. So one, by clicking this down, we could set this to either to auto, override, or adaptive. I usually go with the override setting when I'm overclocking. Then we could go down and set our uh, ring voltage to the same settings. From there, we could go to our, v, our offset on our VSA, the CPU uh, voltage right here. We could go ahead and change that, and, and that would be your actual offset, the VSA offset. I'm sorry. Let's go ahead and set that back down. And now we have the CPU VIN. That is set to auto. Your VDROOP, of course, set to auto. You drop that down. You could enable it or disable it if you enable it. It's going to uh, automatically set your VDROOP. Then we have our PCH. And then we have our fiber faults, which we could enable, disable, or either or. So let's go ahead and set this to the override mode. And now you will see that I can actually change my CPU voltage target. So the CPU voltage tar target as sits is at 1. If I wanted to change that to 1.25, I could either manually go to the plus or the minus, or I could hit my keyboard and let me backspace that. Hit enter and manually put in those settings. So that is our basic view of the overclocking tab. The only other thing that I want to show you is this F12. If you want to take a snapshot of your screen and send it to a USB disk, 
you click the F12, it will send a snapshot so you can remember the settings that you have, of course. Moving over to the memory tab, this is our memory information. Since I'm using XMP memory, it shows the two XMP profiles. Under that, our mem memory, mul the memory multiplier <laughs> configuration, we can set that to automatic, manual, XMP, or XMP2. If I set it to automatic, of course, it's going to give me my the normal SPD settings, which would be at 2133. We go to manual. Now I could go ahead and set my basic timing controls, which is coming up here. I could set any one of these and change my, uh, change my timings. We also have a sec secondary timing control, third timing control. Everything goes to manual when you set it to manual. If I went, to, went ahead and changed it to the XMP profile, it's going to bring up the profile. Now the SPD on this profile does, have a, does set the strap to 125 megahertz. So you will, when you use this XMP profile from Corsair, since I'm using the Corsair memory, it will reset the strap from 100 to 125 and it will automatically decrease your multiplier to give you your core speeds. Set that back to automatic, and these are your basic controls. So you could also set your memory frequency manually. So if I wanted to say set it to 2666, click on it, and then of course I would want to set my timings down below to reflect what 2666 is going to be. Now, since this is the new XMP uh, XMP memory. Of course, our voltage is going to be around 1.2. That is Intel spec. I can, my secondary profile on this does go to, as you can see, at 2800, and that will be at 1.35 volts. Moving over to the advanced tab, we have our CPU configuration, which shows us our EIST, our turbo mode, our CPU C states, hyper threading, virtualization techno uh, technology, and active processor cores. Of course you can see I have everything enabled except for C states. I don't want my uh, CPU uh, cycling down on me. I run my CPU at full bore almost all the time when I'm using it. Especially this type of uh, this type of a unit where it's a high-end unit I'm going to be doing a lot of work that requires me not to uh, go into I guess you could say more of an idle state. Going from the advanced tab, we'll go back again and we'll look at our PCIe configuration. This shows you all our PCIe slots and it'll tell you if, if a card is present or not. And of course, this is you could set it to auto and it'll automatically pick the generation. Of course, I'm using a generation 3 card, so it automatically picked gen 3. Going now to the PCH configuration, we have the PCH SKU name and the ME firmware version. SATA configuration, this is going to show you your SATA configuration. You could set it to what you need it to. You could use IDE RAID or ACHI. If you do have RAID, go ahead and set it to your RAID. You could use Intel RST to do that for you also. Down below we show all our SATA ports. What do I have plugged in and to where are they? So I could either disable or enable the hot plugs on these also. Just by clicking the button down, it will give me the option to disable the hot plugs for my SATA ports. So or hot swaps, whatever, however you want, you consider calling it. So you want to make it hot swappable, make sure you have hot plug enabled. Legacy USB support is enabled. Under USB configuration, XHCI mode, of course, is in Smart Auto. And we're showing our settings. Everything is enabled for our USB ports here. I have them all set up now. Now, you could also, if you're not using something, you want to shut them down, go ahead and disable. Going back again, we have our power management setup. So we have dark mode, we have ERP mode, we have API sleep states, and we have restore on AP. Yeah, AC power loss. We can turn dark mode on or ERP mode on and that will change settings for you. Onboard device configuration. 
What are the onboard devices? Of course, we have a dual Intel LAN on this motherboard, so we can able or disable either LAN. And we do have an HD audio, which is via Zalia. We can enable that or disable that. And then finally, our hardware monitor, where we could go ahead and monitor our voltages and our fan speeds. So right now, as you can see, my CPU fans, fan is running at 20 283 I have it set to smart see no other fans in here at this time since I'm running it on a test bench and then we could also see what our our voltages are running at going over to the boot tab this is going to show you your boot order what's on what's not on are you using UEFI or legacy mode uh, just so you know this board will default in this BIOS which is version 103 it will default to legacy mode so if you want to use UEFI before you go ahead and install anything go ahead get into the BIOS set your defaults first then go into your boot section and set it to UEFI if you're using Windows 8 Windows 8.1 We have our boot options. This is the way that my system is booting up. CSM configuration, of course. What is enabled, what is disabled. Security, do I want to set a password? And last but not least, the hard drive, the, the hard disks uh, boot manager. So what am I using? The Windows boot manager. Uh, save and exit tab. And this basically gives you your saves or your exits. <laughs> okay, so if you click on save and save changes and reset, which is also can be done by hitting F10, that will uh, save your changes and reset your reset your BIOS. Discard changes and reset, restore defaults. This is your boot override. Your Windows Boot Manager. Your setup profile. You can set you can save the setup profile. You could load a profile. And, of course, select BIOS file. If you want to update your BIOS, you can do it through, through, the, through the BIOS by clicking on this. It'll, it'll detect that you have a USB drive in. You'll have, you'll, you put your BIOS onto that USB drive. Go ahead and flash it. Well, everyone, that's been our quick overview of the UEFI BIOS for the EVGA X99 FTW Edition motherboard. See you the next time. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Visit us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. And of course, make sure you visit us for the full review at www.hightechlegion.com. Stay thirsty, my friends. Bye-bye.